What's an unusually strange historical event that few people know of? Armenian Genocide. It happened and many people from Turkey and Europe completely erased it from the textbooks. Over 1 million people killed including infants and children. My great grandfather's parents and sister were burned in their own home while he managed to escape through the back. The US Army Air Force almost tried to use bats laden with incendiary bombs on timers against Japanese cities. The idea being they would release the bats over the city. Then the bats would hide in hard to reach places. And then go boom starting fires everywhere and in hard to reach places. A test was so successful they nearly burned down a US base with 4 bats. 1811, 1812, New Madrid Earthquakes. Australian Anzac troops in Germany during World War I. Spotted a broken down. Useless German tank in the middle of no man's land. They called artillery and airplanes to distract the Germans who had machine guns. And hauled the tank back behind friendly lines. Purely because they could. The tank was a model called the Mephisto. The last of its kind. It still sits in the Brisbane Museum to this day. All because a bunch of mad cunts wanted a shitty tank. From 1984-85 some Japanese candy companies were blackmailed by a person or group of people calling themselves the monster with 21 faces it's actually really fascinating. Basically they sent letters to a candy company telling them they had put cyanide into their products causing the company to lose 20 million inches profit. They then turned their attention to another company and they actually drove the police superintendent to suicide. They then randomly stopped after that sending a goodbye letter. No one was ever caught or identified. Though they caught a suspicious person on video and an undercover agent saw a strange man following him one night. It's actually really fascinating like something out of a movie. The eugenics policies of the United States from the late 1800s to the late 1900s. Before 1933. California sterilized four times as many people. Voluntarily and non-voluntarily as the next four countries who practice sterilization of its citizens combined. Hitler got very excited about the program and modeled his own after it. Most Australians know about Darwin getting bombed in World War II and they were. Barely anyone knows that Broome was bombed a fair bit too. I never got taught this in school either. Had to read a book to find out. Quite annoying that only Darwin's bombings gets taught just because it's the capital of NT and Broome is in the far north of WA so no one cares. Newcastle was also shelled by a Japanese submarine on the 8th of June 1942. For this not familiar with Australia. Newcastle is on the east coast of Australia. Approx 3877 kilometers southeast, by land, of Darwin. There was also a failed incursion into Sydney Harbour by four Japanese mini-subs. One of the subs sank an Australian naval ship but all three subs were scuttled or sank and the crews died. The Tungu Sky Vent. An explosion the size of a 10 or 30 megaton nuclear blast in a remote Russian forest in 1908. That's over 1000 times more powerful than the Hiroshima atomic bomb. It knocked down 80 million trees over 830 square miles and was observed around the globe as far as Washington DC. It was believed to be a meteorite exploding. But no crater was found and it's believed the debris burned up in the atmosphere after the explosion. Thanks to Russia wanting Pepsi. And being unable to pay for it with cash. Pepsi was briefly the sixth largest naval power on the planet due to being paid in Russian naval vessels. They sold the ships for scrap. But imagine if they'd kept it. Mad Jack Churchill. Only soldier who had a confirmed kill with a long bow. Charged Germans with a claymore. Played Amazing Grace. Come on his bagpipes as he got captured. You left out the best part. After he got captured. He escaped and made for the channel. Pre D-Day. So no clue what his plan was once there. Close bracket. Gets captured again. Put in the special camp for the escapees. Escapes. Head south this time. Is picked up by the Americans in Italy. Was en route post victory in Europe to the Pacific when Hiroshima and Nagasaki happened. Was reportedly pissed at the Americans for cutting short a bloody good war. In 1916 they sentenced an elephant to death because he killed a circus worker. 
They executed this by hanging the elephant on a crane. The circus worker was a homeless man the circus had hired off the street. Mary the elephant had a bad tooth and the guy started probing the tooth causing Mary a lot of pain. So she crushed him. The sick fucks sold tickets to the hanging. But when they tried to hang her the chain broke. Mary fell and broke her hip. Mary died on the second attempt. However. This happened in Owen. Tennessee. It makes me incredibly sad every time I think about it. There was a span of time where clocks were already a thing but were too luxurious for the average citizen. But most cities had one on their church or something. And since the day starts a little bit different everywhere. Every city had their own time zone. It had to be generalized over the globe because of industrial revolution and railroads getting more popular but it still took a very long time for every village to be convinced that it would be better to adapt. Julianne Koch was on a plane that crashed over a rainforest in the early 70s. She was the sole survivor of the crash. Managing to adapt to her new environment after living in the jungle for a while as a child. She wandered for 11 days before being found. And is now works in the biology field in Peruvian jungles. The Tuskegee Syphilis Experiments 600 impoverished black men were recruited so researchers could study the natural course of syphilis. None of the men were told they had the disease. Only that they would receive free medical treatment and meals. Double quote. It was supposed to last 6 months. But went on for 40 years. When the study first started. Penicillin had not been discovered as a way to treat the disease. After it was. None of the men in the study were treated for it. Leading to unnecessary progression of undeath by syphilis. Not a fun way to go. This shitty shitty behavior is part of why clinical trials require informed consent and much more stringent ethics criteria. There were a shit ton of crazy eugenics tests done in the name of science in those days. People went in for a health checkup and came out sterilized. That time a dentist got pissed at Japan because of the bombing of Pearl Harbor so he declared war on Japan and suggested making bombs using bats. And the U.S. Military actually went through with attempting to make them. They only stopped making their bat bombs because they developed the nuke. When the Mongols at their height of power conquered China. They were still in their phase of killing all the people and burning their cities. To turn it back to pasture for their horses. Huge swaths of Central Asia had already been treated so. Laid to waste. There was one guy. I don't remember what his name was. A northern tribesman who'd fought against the Mongols but been captured and joined them. When they were deciding what to do with China. He convinced the Mongols there was more profit in leaving as it was and levying taxes. With which the Mongols could buy whatever they wanted. Apparently that hadn't occurred to the Mongols before. But that one guy definitely saved millions of lives. The Halifax Explosion. In 1917 a munitions ship detonated. Creating the largest non-nuclear man-made explosion in history. Thousands died. Thousands were injured. And the ship was burning long enough to attract enough attention that the detonation blinded even thousands more. Boston participated heavily in responding to the disaster. To this day. Nova Scotia donates the Christmas tree that is displayed publicly in Boston every year. The legend of the green children of Woolpit concerns two children of unusual skin color who reportedly appeared in the village of Woolpit in Suffolk, England. Some time in the 12th century. Perhaps during the reign of King Stephen. The children. Brother and sister. Were of generally normal appearance except for the green color of their skin. They spoke in an unknown language. And would only eat raw broad beans. Eventually they learned to eat other food and lost their green pallor. But the boy was sickly and died soon after he and his sister were baptized. The girl adjusted to her new life. But she was considered to be rather loose and wanton in her conduct. 2. After she learned to speak English. The girl explained that she and her brother had come from St. Martin's Land. A subterranean world inhabited by green people. Robert Lincoln, Abraham's only surviving son was pushed into the path of an oncoming train and was subsequently saved by Edwin Booth, John Wilkes, Acker Abe's color, brother. It isn't super significant. Just a silly twist of fate. 
and Robert Lincoln was at or nearby for the assassinations of his father, Garfield and McKinley, leading him to be so superstitious about it so that he vowed never to meet a president again. I mean this wasn't an event per se but it is one of my favorite stories. When the Titanic was sinking the head chef aboard knew the ship was going down. So he decided to take as much wine as he could and drink it. His logic was it was going to the bottom of the ocean anyway so why not. Anyway so he gets pretty tipsy and continues to eat all the food he can find because lord knows how long they would be out there. The man also filled at least one lifeboat with food and drinks. But decided not to get on yet. So the boat is starting to do that iconic tilting into the air and the head chef decides to climb onto the railing and walk across it since it was basically a walkway at that point. Gets to the propellers just as the boat breaks in half and he rides it down he gets to the top and spends as much time he can out of the water by riding it down before being submerged into the ocean. He then waited for the lifeboats to come back and was one of the few people who survived while being in the water that night. Sybil Ludington rode 40 miles to her town to gather 400 troops and warn them that the British were coming to attack. This happened in 1777 and she is often overshadowed by Paul Revere. Sybil was a 14 year old girl who was on her horse Star. When she did this in the middle of the night. Waking troops by banging a stick on fence posts and other objects. There is currently a sculpture of her in New York. But Paul Revere is often recognized first. I've heard the story, but had to look it up to retell it. In 1809 Jean Todd Crawford rode on horseback from Greensburg, KY to Danville, KY, 60 miles, at the age of 44. She needed an abdominal tumor removed. The surgery was performed on Christmas Day by Dr. Ephraim McDowell on his kitchen table. Without anesthetic. A part of the fallopian tube, along with 22. 5 pounds of stuff the tumor was removed. After 25 days, she returned home via horseback so the story goes on the same path. It was considered the first successful intentional opening of the abdominal cavity to remove something. She died at 78. The Taiping Rebellion of 1850 to 1864 was the second most deadly singular conflict in history. At 25 million deaths. Only beaten by the second world war. That's just under 5k deaths per day. Every day. For 14 years. That's a lot of dead people. Especially for that time. There was only about 1. 2 billion people total on earth. And x 200 b. To put that in perspective. That is about 2. 1% of the total global population eliminated. With today pop of 7. 7 billion. A war that eliminated 2. 1% of the total pop would kill over 160 million. Today almost 7,500 people a day die just in the USA. Canada has a heist nearly 3. 000 tons of maple syrup in 2011-2012. They stole it from a cartel that controls 77% of the global maple syrup supply. They specifically stole from the strategic reserve of syrup that's used to price fix the global market. It was millions in syrup that was taken. Absolutely wild. Most Americans don't know about the 30 years war which was an unbelievably complicated clusterfuck that killed 20% of the German population. I tried to read a book about it and gave up because I could not make heads or tails of what TF was going on. Any historians care to summarize the 30 years war? Germanic states were either Catholic or Protestant. They hired mercenaries to attack their rivals when a staunch anti-Protestant pope ruled all the lands had to be Catholic. Surrounding countries fought proxy wars to gain influence. The German people died from war disease and starvation. There was a period in the Middle Ages of knights fighting giant snails in paintings. No one knows why. Oh gosh yes. And those were alongside drawings of monkeys projectile pooping. Strange green DCK monsters. And nuns picking dicks off of trees. Look up NSFW medieval illuminations. And many of these were in bibles. Because that's what the monks copied and illuminated the most. There is also a medieval recipe book with the proper way to prepare and cook a unicorn and present the head to the king so he knows he's eating unicorn. 
What a wild time. In the 1980s, Domino's Pizza introduced a mascot named the Noid. Its main goal. Stealing pizzas and making your pizza delivery late. The slogan. Avoid the Noid. Double quote. Unfortunately. There was a man with paranoid schizophrenia named Kenneth Noid who thought this whole campaign was created to mock and persecute him. Due to the mascot's name. So one day. Noid entered an Atlanta Domino's location and took two employees hostage. During the five hour standoff. He got hungry. So he ordered the employees to make him some pizzas. Of course. He didn't pay for any of them so thus inadvertently living up to the Noid's tendency to steal pizzas. He was eventually apprehended and spent some time in a mental institution until his death in 1995. Meanwhile. Domino's retired the mascot due to what had happened and it was never mentioned again. Operation Mincemeat. The Nazis had an actual working with the King. Tornado Cannon. A B-52 with a payload of thermonuclear bombs broke apart and crashed near Goldsboro, North Carolina in 1961. One of the bombs nearly detonated. Three of its four arming mechanisms had activated.